so in this lecture we are uh, going to study some more properties about principal ideal domains so before that i will first state a very important uh, theorem which is uh, which will be used in our next theorem so if i take r to be a commutative ring okay and i'm taking i am taking ideals so n1 is an ideal which is contained in n2 which is contained in n3 and so on so all these ni's are what all these ni's are ideals of that commutative ring okay this thing is called as a ascending chain of ideal because they are increasing right so the how the size of ideals is increasing n1 is a subset of n2 so this is called ascending chain of ideals and these are ideals in what these are the ideals in the ring r okay then if i take the union of all these ideals when i take the union of all these ideals i hope the picture is in uh, is is in front of you this is n1 the next ideal is n2 which is larger than that n3 is larger than that and so and everything is inside what everything is going inside my ring r and so on and when i take the union this entire thing becomes the union so this shaded part becomes the union of these ideals in n then that set will be called as n okay now the question is that is this capital n a ideal is it an ideal so the answer to that question is yes then n is also ideal of the ring r so i hope the result is understood i'm i'm taking increasing sized ideals n1 subset of n2 subset of n3 all are ideals when i take the union means i'm going to take everything okay covered by all those ideals and that is union of ni and that union of ni i'm going to call a new set that new set is what that new set is n and this n uh, we are trying to tell here that this n is again a ideal of the ring r right so now because of this we can now prove a very interesting theorem which is related to pids okay that theorem is called as ascending chain condition so let me state that theorem now so that theorem is very important theorem for pid so let d be a pid principal ideal domain remember the previous theorem that i have stated is there i am just taking what r is just a commutative ring but here i am saying that it should be a principal ideal domain means it should be first of all an integral domain it should be commutative okay so here i'm taking and every ideal is also a principal ideal so this is d is a principal and in this principal in this pid so this is my capital d okay which is a which is a principal ideal and in this pid i'm going to again take an ascending chain of ideals here i will take the ideals which are increasing in size means it is the ascending chain of ideals and let n1 n2 n3 and so on b and ascending chain of ideals in d then the result says that this theorem says that this ascending chain of ideals must stop at some point this cannot go on increasing infinitely many times okay so it so a point will come when the the size of the ideal will not increase okay then this chain must means what should happen means i must i'm having n1 i'm having n2 and so on a point will come when you calculate the nth ideal and when you try to calculate the ideal larger than that that ideal nr and ns that ideal will be same as nr 
okay S means the next ideal won't be larger than this particular ideal means this is going to be what this chain is going to be of what length it is going to be of finite length it won't go n3 n8 n9 n10 and it won't go on increasing like this it has to stop somewhere okay so somewhere you have to put a break that now nothing is going to increase okay and it has to stop so this is called as what this theorem is called as ascending chain condition for which particular rings am i talking for principal ideal domains so it, this means that if you are not working in a principal ideal domain what may happen it may happen that ideals n1 n2 n3 n4 and this thing will go on increasing and it will not stop but if you're working in a pid a point will come when all this thing will go to a limit and finally the further ideals will be coming will come as the same last ideal so so from that point onwards it will be it will be stagnant and it won't increase in the size okay so this is very very important theorem of ascending chain condition and because of ascending chain condition theorem if you take a pid we can always do factorization so what is the consequence of this what is the important consequence i'm not giving you the proof of this that if you take x which is not zero and if x is a non-unit then this x can be factorized into irreducibles so because of ascending chain condition we can prove this particular important theorem which i have already stated in my previous lecture okay now one most important theorem in principal ideal domains is about maximality so let me write that theorem so if i take uh in, in a pid if d is a pid and if p is an irreducible element p is an irreducible element then i will form a principal ideal from that p okay this is the principle now this ideal is which type of ideal now we have studied some various types of ideals okay it's like we have studied maximal ideal we have studied prime ideal so what type of ideal is this then it comes out to be that this p is a maximal ideal so what is the simplest example of that let me take a simplest example so what is the simplest PID that all of us know? We know that integers is a PID. It's a principal ideal domain, as I've told you in, the, in my previous lecture. Okay. Then I will take one irreducible element. Pick any irreducible element, which is integer. Now, you know that 5 is irreducible. Now, why is 5 irreducible? Because 5 is written as factorized as 5 into 1. And this one is what? This one is unit. This is the definition of a uh, irreducible element that if if that element p can be written as a into b then either a is unit or b is unit so this means that 5 is becoming what or you can write it as even minus 5 into minus 1 still minus 1 is again a unit in unit in what unit in z so this means that this p is what this p is a irreducible element in z so by the virtue of this theorem, now I can apply this theorem and I can say that Z is integral, uh, is a PID and 5 is an irreducible element. Then the ideal generated by 5, this ideal means you, have, you all know that this is equal to 5Z. This ideal which contains all multiples of 5, right? And 0 also, let me add 0 here also. Okay, this ideal is which type of ideal this ideal is a maximal ideal in z okay so this is one of the very sim important theorems that will be used so let me take one more example okay let me take a principal ideal domain now all of us know what is the um, what is the principal ideal domain example of principle let me take f to be a field okay and let me take the domain to be all polynomials with 
uh, with coefficients of f okay so you know that this is always a pid i have mentioned this pid in my previous lecture we have not proved it okay so so in particular if i take r so i know r is a field so then i will take the domain the principal ideal domain is rx all polynomials with real coefficients okay and let me take p which is an element so what is that set now it's we are talking in rx which contains all polynomials with real coefficients so let me take a polynomial p and what is that polynomial p let me take the polynomial p is x square plus one okay so p is nothing but what p is here a polynomial which is nothing but x square plus one now this polynomial x square plus one is it reducible or irreducible this also we have discussed in our previous lecture this polynomial is of degree two and what are the roots of this polynomial the roots of this polynomial are complex roots and they do not belong to the field r correct and i hope you, re you remember this result that if you have a polynomial of degree two or degree three and if the roots are inside the field then it becomes reducible so here the roots are not inside the field means this means that this polynomial x square plus one cannot be factorized or it cannot be reduced or it is irreducible in in which ring in the ring rx correct so this is irreducible element in rx once it is irreducible element in rx now i can go to my previous theorem and see that the pid that i'm talking was rx the irreducible element that i'm talking was what x square plus one and therefore by virtue of this theorem i can say that the ideal generated by that element will be which type of ideal will be a maximal ideal so the conclusion of my thing is here is that the ideal generated by x square plus one is a maximal ideal in rx okay so this comes because of what this comes by above mentioned theorem okay so this is again one of the important things that how will i identify maximal ideals in the ring of polynomials what you have to do you have to take that element and you have to check is it reducible or irreducible if it is irreducible then the ideal generated by that particular element will become a maximal ideal okay now it is high time that one should know that what is an example of a ring which is not a pid yes we have done all pids we have i've written all the list of all pids in the previous class so which is an example which will not become a principal ideal so what you do you consider the set of integers and, ta and take the polynomial with all integer coefficients now you know that f x is a field right so sorry f is a field if f is a field then fx becomes automatically what fx becomes a pid so so now so now don't don't make a wrong conclusion because of this that do not make a wrong conclusion that z is not a field that is why zx is not a pid no that is not correct okay so that argument is not correct but we, we just know that if f is a field then fx is a pid but if f is not a field then we don't know anything then we cannot say it is not a pid okay so that is not uh, the correct logic still here it will happen that zx will be not a zx is not a pid if zx is not a pid this means that in zx what is the meaning of pid pid means every ideal is principal this means that if zx is not pid means there is some ideal sitting in zx which is not principal so logically it means that i can find so there exists an ideal in zx which is not principal now who is that ideal 
in zx which is not principal and that ideal i will take to be ideal generated by x and 2 now all of you know what is the ideal generated by x and 2 this means it is set of all the polynomials with integer coefficients with what with constant term even right so this ideal is first of all i is an ideal of zx okay this will form an ideal of zx and you will observe that this ideal is not a principal ideal because this ideal is generated by two elements so two elements generate i so this means that this ideal i is not a principal ideal therefore we could find an ideal in zx which is not principal and finally we conclude that zx is not a pid so if you now draw the picture of what we have done up to the mark you will now understand that all fields integers set of all uh, in integers okay then all fx where f is a field means all polynomials like the polynomial fields lab spaces rings like rx ux zx uh, sorry cx all these are what all these are pids and something is sitting outside this set and that element is what that element is zx okay so in the next lecture we will find a space which is larger than pids okay and that space will be called as ufd that is unique factorization domain with this we stop here